Did I remember to remove the screen? Did I remember to remove the screen? Here we go. Yay! I actually got the intro right for once. Some of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but oh well. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to vidIQ, the YouTube channel, the YouTube tool, and the YouTube Learning Academy that educates you on your YouTube journey every single day of the week, every single hour of the day, every single minute of the hour, and every single second of the minutes. We welcome you in to our classroom, our lecture theatre, our learning hall. And while we don't guarantee success or play buttons or riches beyond your wildest dreams, what we do offer you is lots of experience, lots of enthusiasm, lots of passion, and lots of encouragement as we share our knowledge and hopefully help you grow your YouTube channels. But as always, during the next couple of hours, I cannot do this with my uh, collection of co-hosts and uh, willing auditors. Introducing first, he is a gaming legend. He is Mr. Dan. Hey, Dan. How are you doing? I, I'm good. You, you use the word willing auditors. And I, that was not, that was not Are something... you under duress again? Are you not wanting to do this? Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't just throw that word around. Mm, okay. Just, you know, really disingenuous of you. I've noticed something as well, Dan. Whenever um, you don't have control of the live streaming tools and somebody brings you in on screen, you always do this. It's kind of I, like your greeting. I, your, your, I can, I, I can do your things. Your wide-eyed. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying it's kind of like your, your hello of sorts. Uh, it's true. I like it. I, I approve. I approve introducing second who i think he's trying to fix something under his desk right now shall we come back to him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he's giving he's giving us a thumbs up so we'll come back we'll come back in a second so introducing second is our guest uh, auditor today uh, she has been on the channel before and she is our ever intrepid clubhouse Clubia, I'm going to make up that word right now. It is JJ Gat. Welcome to the VidIQ house. Hi, nice to see you guys again. Great to and, see you. And you as well. Looking forward to some auditing. And uh, yeah, we'll introduce your channel uh, a little bit more in, in, in the short future. But I think he's now sorted himself out and he's gone through some weird transformation in the meantime. So I was going to be introducing uh, Travis, but it looks as if uh, his space has been occupied invaded once again by everybody's favorite non-auditor look let me explain something to you now the vid iq is one million strong ladies and gentlemen it's one million strong uh we're implementing some changes with these audits now and everyone knows i'm the, the savage champion but now we're the auditing champions of the world and it's important for you to know that these now cost money so go ahead and get your credit cards out uh <laughs> $39.95 for every single audit that we do uh, go ahead and put your numbers right in the chat. We'll take it right from the chat. Don't worry about it. Put your social security in there and your address as well. And we're going to go ahead and take these monies for these uh, audits you've been owing us all this time, man. I mean, you know, we're just trying to get the money back from these million subscribers. That is 100% not true. And uh, Savage, that is the most pathetic, tiny, what? wimpy wrestling belt I have ever seen. Look, let me tell you something. Life. This is what they gave me, man. When you're a champion, you don't choose Look the championship. That. They just give it to you. I don't know what you want from me, Rob. I thought whatever, that was a wristband. Whatever. All right. 
Savage, no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play a video game. I'll bring it back. All right, <laughs> Savage is gone. Oh, there, there, there we go. All right, uh, Savage as usual. Uh, let's say hello to some people then in the chat. I'm going to start with uh, Bori Piano. Hello to you. I'm saying also hello to Ambient Dave from the UK. Uh, Toast with him is chortling away and saying hello to Travis, who's now joined us. Thank you, Travis. And last but not least, Brickcraft17. Dan, go ahead. Who are you saying hello to? Uh, I will say hello to JM Detailing. How about Ultimate Gamer? How we'll say hello to uh, Natural Causes, Poggy Plays, and Epic Entrepreneurs. Hello. Uh, and Travis, over to you. Yep. Say hello to the following. Well, we got uh, Tutorials Mag here. We got Let's Talk About It with Bethel, uh, Egg Keg Films. Eggs are one of the only things I can eat anymore. Peanut. I'm supposed to eat peanuts, but I don't like peanuts. Uh, Neo Air and, uh, of course, Games with Martha. And JJ, as always, I never sure if the guest has chat up. Do you have chat up or not? Yes, I do. And I'm saying right, hello so. to the yeah, Grizzly so. Clock. What's up, Grizzly Clock? Hey, Neo Air. Shout out to Erica. She went too fast. I can't get your last name. What's up, Calvin? Hey, Manticores. Nice seeing you guys. All right, then. So welcome to the VidIQ channel audit live stream. If you are new here, do let us know in the chat with a hashtag new. If you are a regular here, then welcome these new folks to the live stream and maybe share this live stream with fellow creators if you find it useful. But maybe just hang on five, ten minutes until we've done an audit and then you think, yeah, this is actually really useful. I bet my friend over there who does uh, gaming channels or is a travel vlogger, they will find it really useful as well. Do make sure to share. For those who are new, I'm going to show you how this all works in 60 seconds, and we'll be back real soon. Welcome to the vidIQ channel audit live stream, where we review your YouTube channels. There are two links in the description, one for gaming channels, one for non-gaming channels. Make sure you submit every week as we clear the form after every live stream. Channel audits are 100% free, so please don't send us any super chats expecting to receive an audit. And don't waste your time asking for one in the chat. If there are any alternative ways to get picked for an audit, such as memes, we will let you know during the live stream. If we can't audit your channel today, vidIQ has a channel audit tool working 24 7 for you. If you haven't already installed vidIQ, download it now for free. A link is in the description and make sure to take advantage of our free 30 day trial. If you submit your channel for audit, expect the following. We are sharing nothing more than our knowledge, our experience and our passion as fellow YouTube creators. It's up to you whether or not you take our advice. There are tons of links to lots of useful resources in the video description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Share this live stream with another fellow creator who may find it useful. And finally, moderators, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do every single week. All right, let's do this. Final bits of housekeeping as always. We are supporting Team C's with this live stream. So any super chats go directly to that cause. I believe they're now over $50 million already with a target of $30 million by the end of this year. Just search hashtag Team C's to learn more about it. We're trying to remove 30 million pounds of trash from oceans, rivers, and lakes. I did a poll at the beginning of this live stream asking, how old is your channel? And apparently 9% of you watching are channels that are less than a week old. So I think, first of all, just well done. Congratulations for starting your YouTube journey. Uh, we're hopefully going to help you a little bit uh, through this live stream. 13% uh, of you are less than a month old. And 37% of you are channels that are less than a year old. So with all of that being said, there's a lot to learn in the next couple of hours. But because we are so oversubscribed every single week, we can't audit every single channel. So what I recommend you do right now is if you have a second screen to hand, make sure that you put that second screen up so that you can review your channel as we are looking at the channels that we're auditing because we talk about fundamentals so often, in particular, channel focus, titles, and thumbnails. And those are the big three things that will probably talk in memoriam, if that's even a word, uh, about today. So really consider that as you're looking at your channels. And with all of that being said, I can't think of any other housekeeping uh, parts other than uh, I forgot to mention uh, that we are not only a channel audit service on a Tuesdays. We are a full web suite of tools and extensions that will help your YouTube experience. I'm going to keep it very, very simple this week. 
YouTube are going to remove the public dislike counts if they haven't already done so for your channel and your viewing experience. But until they do that, we have a very simple tool that shows you the likes to dislikes ratio. So if I mouse over this video by Colin and Samia, it tells me it has a 99% likes to dislike ratio. So that's obviously a very high rating. I'd be more than happy to watch it. So if currently you can still see your public dislike counts, then this tool is going to work for you. But that is just like the very tip of the vidIQ iceberg. We have so many more tools that are going to work even when YouTube removes the public dislike counts. Uh, but that's just kind of like your, your flavoring of some of the stuff we do here at vidIQ. Now, with all of that being said, I think it's time to start actually auditing some channels. And we will start this week with the first channel that submitted to us. And I think, Travis, this is right down your street to kick us off. It is DT Tech Wins. They have just over a 1,000 subscribers, and they look like they are a tech channel. What do you think? First impressions. Yeah, I see a lot of gaming stuff, which is kind of cool. A little PlayStation with a little bit of uh, a little bit of Nintendo there, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's twins. That's kind of fun. Something different. Mm, I wonder how they yeah. uh, how they do the videos. It would be interesting to see. I think that's leaning into that. Didn't we have a twin channel like two years ago or something? We were talking about. Remember that? Sounds familiar. We've, we've had like we do maybe one twin channel a year, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's such a cool concept if you lean into it and kind of do some fun stuff with it. But anyway, uh, so some PlayStation stuff. we got a microphone there, maybe online gaming and streaming. So there's kind of a general vibe going on. Oh, a couple angles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Multiple camera angles and stuff. All right, now. How long have they been High doing production this? production values. Yeah, very. How long have they been at this? Let's take a look. Oh, let's see then. So that all this video is... 10 months, so less than a year. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, they got the, the uh, razor mask. I was trying to get a hold of that thing. Um, okay, yeah, months, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine months, yeah, yeah. Just a lot of headphone stuff. Yeah. You notice how um, the headphone stuff did really well, especially for a channel that's kind of newerish. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to point out, actually, uh, Travis, is if we look like at the smorgasbord of thumbnails, um, when you see gaming stuff, the view counts are in like the hundreds, mm -hmm. but whenever you see headphone stuff, it's always mm -hmm. creeping over a thousand, sometimes two thousand views. But that's actually what happened. Strength fair. One hundred percent. That's actually how I started my tech channel with headphone reviews, and uh, Jeff obviously has done headphone and earbud reviews. And there's a lot of um, success that can come from that uh, that kind of general thing. But it looks like they've kind of switched to gaming now. But they've done some headsets related to gaming, which is a good way to kind of wedge your content in. I love that strategy. Yeah. I love if you're trying to get out of one kind of niche, uh, wedge in the new content uh, into that existing niche and then see if you can move your way over. And that's that's a, a really good way of doing it. And again, some of these are doing better than others, but all like um, just <clears throat> really, really good. Now, this explains things, things you, may, you may not know and more is so vague. No wonder it doesn't have that many views because I don't know what it means. Like, what are they talking about? <clears throat> are they talking yeah, about? The switch or the Bluetooth or what? Like, what exactly is that video about? So um, the title gets cut off. Um, what's yeah. cut off is Nintendo Switch Bluetooth audio feature. So the thing, the yeah. what is at the very end of a, of a title, unfortunately. Yeah, and you have to keep it tight if you want people to be able to read it on all platforms, um, yeah. especially like phone and stuff. The the title getting truncated is is unfortunately common. So you need to strike like the three things you may not know and more. First of all, and more means nothing. As soon as you say in more, you're not saying anything. Um, so you start off strong with the title, but then I still don't know what it's about by the time it's truncated. So definitely look into that. But everything else um, is looking pretty solid, um, especially for a channel that hasn't even been around for a year. And um, continued success. Only a month. It takes about a month, and his views get a, over a 1,000, which is great. It's fantastic. Let me ask the, or, uh, the, the uh, crew here. Thumbnails. I think are of a very, very high standard already for it, certainly mm -hmm. for a channel of this size. But are there maybe some tweaks to oh, these yeah. thumbnails? Because I look at them and I feel as if maybe they're just like 10 to 20 percent too busy, a little yeah. over cluttered or the text, you know, could be 10 to 20 percent better. Yeah. One, one, one tweak would be to blur the background in a lot of these. I think they're they have a cool concept headphones on a PlayStation. If they could just take that picture with a blurry background or cut it out in Photoshop and blur it that way, that could make it a lot more clear as to what we're looking at. And, and I would, I would yeah, recommend. I, I was going to say I was recommended bringing the, um, the the product closer and then make it maybe a little bit 
something one so i see the two headsets i understand you're on one versus the other but um yeah if you have products just make them a little bit bigger so we can see and, and perhaps the blur would fix that um maybe i don't know it's just it's, it's really busy and i just you know it's just a lot sometimes you just you, you can probably tell what the hero of the thumbnail is but you're not like you can't see it instinctively an example i'm looking at here is that yeah i think this microphone here is definitely the hero because you've got that stroke effect on it but everything else the box this stand here is still a little bit in sharp focus and because the color scheme is kind of similar throughout the the thumbnail it just my eye has to kind of find it a little bit rather than hitting me almost hitting me in the face um but as we, as we say, I think these are refinements, aren't they? The thumbnails are already of a, a fairly high standard, which needs to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Travis, I wanted to end with you on this one. Like, we're getting into a very important time of the year for channels like this, tech channels. What do you think this channel could maybe do in the next six weeks in terms of maybe greater reach on their yeah. channel? Well, right now, this week, they need to be putting out some of the hottest stuff for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I mean, really, those videos should go out this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you have an affiliate deal with Amazon, you're going to do very well. Um, and then, of course, the Christmas list there, the Christmas wish list, uh, all those things for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Re-review some products that you think are still worth uh, purchasing and make sure you're you're leveraging the holiday season uh, in those titles and thumbnails. Because, well, sure, in January, they'll be dead. They're going to do very well uh, in the meantime. So time to get on that right now. Can, can I just add? Like an, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Sorry, I just want to add that it's going to be really tough this year to get some of this stuff. They they may want to consider that, as, even just if you're going to test some different ideas, you might want to consider some resources that people could be using to get their hands on a PlayStation, for example. Yeah, or alternatives. Like, we all know that this is the best headphone set, but, like, it's not available, so maybe you want to try this. Mm -hmm. um, headphones are, like, a perfect purchasing gift for others, for friends and family. Uh, they're just in that nice usually the price bracket of like between a hundred and $250. And then I, I, I notice here that the channel seems to always focus on one product per video. So like in, we're thinking a listicles, perhaps, you know, the top three gaming headsets for PlayStation five for Xbox for switch There's multiple ideas that can definitely be used here for this channel. So it's already doing very well. Lots of potential. I'm curious how the twin dynamic works actually. Um, Travis, I wonder if like they have a, um, one person does the, is an on-screen talent and then the other one is maybe the editor or the filmer film i know there is this I mean, one example where we can see them both in screen but i would actually if, if it was me and i had a twin or something i would have one person take the pros and the other person take the cons and then discuss during the video and then it doesn't always have to be the same person every week but it would be an interesting dynamic to have you know one person kind of arguing the good parts versus the, the bad parts and i think i think that'd be really fun to watch like these versus ones, you could almost, you yeah. know, there's two people there, you know, yep. you're sort of fa facing each other in a kind of like this fight pose with the verses mm -hmm. with the earphones. That could be, and, really then, and then tell people in the comments to vote who won. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So that is DT Tech Twins. And I know that was a tech channel, but I think we talked about a lot of interesting concepts there. You know, they've got the channel focus nailed down. The thumbnails are really good, but there's a few tweaks they can make there. Titles need to be shortened down a little bit, ideas going forward. So all of those things. Uh, you could definitely apply to your channel. What we're going to do now is look at the first gaming channel that's submitted this week. And so we go over to our uh, gaming aficionado, Dan, to take a look at Thai89. Woo! Gaming. <laughs> they have 130 subscribers. And I just think this is a Stone Cold Steve Austin channel because I like wrestling and I'm seeing the, the skulls. But I don't think it is. I think it's something <laughs> that might be about Rocket League. I'm seeing a lot of Rocket League, I think. Yeah, it's the the titles kind of uh, definitely tipping me to that. The, the, what's interesting is I didn't know it was Rocket League until I read the title. And usually with gaming thumbnails, it's pretty obvious because the games are so popular, you know. But the the color of this latest one is like kind of throwing me. I'm like, what is that? I see like, I see kind of a SWAT vehicle and it says Platinum and it takes a minute. Platinum moves yeah. Rocket League. So... Yeah. That's the first thing I want to talk about. I think uh, for any channel, it's important to help your audience do no thinking at all. It should be very clear. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And this is this is just a good marketing tip. But if you yeah, yeah. can present something to somebody and they get it just by looking at it, just by looking at the title and the thumbnail, then you you win. You win the click every time. They they understand so what immediately what it is. Dan is saying here is treat all viewers as 
idiots. That's what that's I do when quote. I watch that's videos. The that's what I heard. That's I what feel I like heard. an idiot when I watch a Dan video. That's for yeah. sure. Me too. Well, thanks for taking good advice and pooping all over it. Um, we can we can go to someone else then, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 Dan, we need you. This is a gaming channel. <laughs> oh, now you need me. Um, so that that would be my first thing. And that's just, again, advice for any channel. If I have to look at your thumbnail and think, what is that? What is that yeah. game? I'm not going to stop the scroll. I'm not going to stop to to really make that determination. I'm going to keep scrolling. So that was the first problem I noticed. Uh, I do like that you're using custom thumbnails. I, I like that you are using text very sparingly. Uh, so I like this title thumbnail combo at the top here, held hostage. And then the, the somebody in there and saying, help me. The execution isn't great. It's red text with a red kind of thing around it. And it's dark, so you can't really see what's going on. But the concept is solid. It, you know, you you need to you need to really hit the hostage thing home in this thumbnail. Like with the person maybe behind bars or something, and then the help me text over in the corner. But you had the right idea, and I think that's what's important about this channel is you're so close with all of these concepts. It's really, uh, it, it's just it's that close. Like the the next thumbnail, it says fail. It looks like you're gearing up for a really epic move, but it says fail. Maybe something, maybe another image there to to really hit that point home. Like like, give me that visual of failure. You know, so just think about what this stuff means to viewers as they're scrolling by. Here's a question, Adan. Do you know what game this is? The one that you just... Um, Rust. Critiqued. Yeah, it says Rust in the title. Um, so I, I know it's Rust, but... Oh, uh, is that a game? Whoops. Yeah, Rust is a game, but you you have a good point. It, I thought I it was Rainbow to... Six. Oh, well, there is a game called Rust. See, you might be right. Uh... That might be Rainbow Six. And that's important. It, if your thumbnail is more clear, the the fans of that game will know what it is without reading the title. But then so, what we have here is a first-person strategic shooter. I'm not sure what type of first-person shooter Rust is. But then Rocket League. Mm -hmm. So we got different games, perhaps. Yeah. How much crossover it, is there in terms of audience? And, and this comes down to, uh, I'm working on a video on this right now, actually. This the, And we've talked about it in the past. Uh, audience avatars. Who who's the Who is the viewer that you're targeting on this channel, when you when you make a Rust video, when you make a Rainbow Six video, and make a Rocket League video, have you done the research to discover the Venn diagram there to see how much overlap there is between Rocket League fans and Rainbow Six fans? Mm -hmm. And if you've done that research and you have a solid idea of that of that demographic, that's great. But I, you know, just just at first glance, I don't really see it. But yeah, I, I think we know the views kind of speak for themselves. It's not it's not really working. Switching between all these different games isn't really working, but it does seem like you focus on one for a bit, and that's good. Commit to one for a while and keep tweaking your strategy on how you can really reach that that viewer you're trying to target. Just sorry about most popular to see if there's anything popping out here, but it looks as if it was all concept from a long time ago. So you've been on YouTube for a long, long mm -hmm. time at this point, uh, eight eight years plus. Yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting uh, success here too. So. It's about finding that next game. You know, I, I think that's what, what this person kind of needs to sit down and do. Like, is Rocket League your favorite thing right now? Is that the thing you're most committed to? And if so, it should be really easy to get in, do the research, and figure out what kind of videos can I make that will appeal to my target audience. Let's move on to the next channel. Uh, JJ, we've been easing you in a little bit here, but you are going to be front and center for this next channel audit because it is the Pink hey. family. They have... Approaching 2,000 subscribers, a very snappy, cartoony uh, channel banner. Uh, what do you think of this one? I like it. I the, ch the channel banner is um, great. I, I think, however, the family is a tr um, has a beautiful dynamic and is attractive enough that the, the Pink's family is okay. And also because I know that you guys, I looked at some of your videos. I know you guys do a lot of pranks on your family channel. Uh, the the actual faces and stuff like that might do well as well because it's, it's even those pranks, it's really family. I see family first before I see pranks. But when I see your video, I know that a lot of your content is related to pranks. But your channel banner, I think if you were to change it up in a little bit, maybe try the actual, with your actual human faces um, and then maybe, you know, do the, the cartoon ones. But I like it though. I, I think that's pretty creative. Mm -hmm. In terms of the banner. Yeah, in terms of the banner. Um, the thumbnails, I know that pranks channels use a lot of 
um, you want to feature what the prank is. And then a lot of times they're busy. They have emojis. Um, uh, sometimes, and then they're usually more busy compared to other YouTube channel um, uh, thumbnail yeah. um, because you you want to you have a lot of expressions and stuff like that. So I think you guys accomplished that with your thumbnails. It's like a lot of stuff going on. And the people aware of the specific challenge that you're doing in the video, they'll see it and they'll know like that, that pack we one chip challenge. That's amazing yeah. thumbnail. That's an amazing thumbnail. I picked out that one. It's stunning, really. It really pops. Uh, and there's a certain simplicity to it as well. You know, there is, I guess, organized chaos with all of her fire, but just the expression and the way they've they've added the little fire effect to the, to the wide open mouth is really cool stuff there. What do you think about that compared to the spicy noodle challenge, which is uh, another sort of similar so theme? Ones. Yeah. So, yeah, again, I think this is good. But as you say, because there's more elements on there, you know, there's 2x spicy, that's perhaps quite small. Uh, there's, there's four different characters on there. Um, good, but I still think just the focus on the one person is super powerful. Right. And I just quick question for you guys in terms of emojis on thumbnails. Like they use the emojis. I know that's common with the prank channels. What are you guys feelings yeah. about emojis on thumbnails? Uh... I, I would say because because we were just looking at this channel and they, they they went through like a huge emoji emoji um, yeah right their theme too, they're too distracting yeah. in this, in, this uh, in that instance yeah but yeah. I, I think if it if it starts it almost turns into a little bit of a branding element yeah. to channels if you use it effectively right but it gets to a point where you almost have to use it on every single thumbnail for it to have that impact uh, like I guess on this one I'm not sure what that adds to her expression which is similar um if you were to limit yourself to three elements per thumbnail no more no less or, yeah. or like, less would be two two would be good too but let's say you would limit yourself no more than three elements that emoji is one element down uh, like now you've used an emoji now that's one of the elements so it's one of the things that is fighting for attention in the thumbnail so i would i i would use this very carefully i agree i think i, th I think you know, the, the thumbnails are, are of a very good quality again, aren't they? And we're just, we're almost yeah. nitpicking a little bit in terms of uh, tweaks and how to improve mm -hmm. them. Going back to the channel as a whole then, um, as you said, JJ, it looks like it's a family channel that's sort of leaning onto the food challenges and pranks. What's going to make the Pinks family be not just another food and pranks family channel because i feel as if this has been done before right yeah i mean that's something you guys have to go and think about like if it's look at the comments in sections in your videos i'm assuming you have an audience and see what is it about your videos that people pick up on and whatever that is let the audience kind of like tell you what your differentiator is um when someone's you know at some point with these family channels i know each member of the family has its own personality and they have their own fans and the, as your yeah. audience grows you have people who look after just one member or the other one and so it starts to, the audience in your comment section actually start to let you know what's what's different with that and then play up on whatever that is because that's what they are picking up on versus you you deciding that and you it's hard for you to decide that it's whoever's watching your videos they'll make that decision for you and then when you find the differentiator go go with that because up until that point, it was just one of many family channels doing pranks, which is very, very common. So, um, you know, but, you know, yeah, but you guys are beautiful and you look like you have fun. I, I did look at some of the, the audio quality and video quality is really creative. And, well, you guys do a good job of doing teasers right at the beginning uh, before yeah. you launch into whatever you're going to do about. So I want to know, like, oh, I want to see how that plays out. And then you do a little intro and then you go right into it. So I think you guys have the formula right. It's just a matter of finding your differentiator, like Rob mentioned. Right. Final final thoughts, Travis. Um, if you've if you've had any um, consultations with uh, channels like this, maybe some some general advice to break out. You know, you guys are right. You hit it uh, hit all the nails on the head. I've I've right. done a bunch of channels like this, and uh, differentiation is really important. And definitely being a part of the community uh, is super important because ultimately um, that's how family channels kind of survive. For the most part, they're not educating very much they're entertaining so you need to have a viewership that is coming back consistently in order to kind of grow that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh I, sorry dana did i cut you off it, you it's okay it's okay i was just going to jump in and say uh, one of the things we recommend a lot of times with channels like this is trending topics 
Mm-hmm. Can like Squid Game would have yeah. been a good one. Like, can you could you as a family of like oh, yeah. challenge yourselves to replicate something in Squid Game, like the cookie cutting out the the cookie thing? You know that that could have been cool. Uh, so look for trends and then try and put your own spin on them. It's always for for any channel when it's when it comes to like a live action family channel, a vlog channel. These are always good ways to kind of start standing out. Beautiful, beautiful. That is a Pink's family. Uh, so, uh, JJ, I, I'm going to say you passed your first uh, lead channel order there. So you. you now get to formally introduce yourself and your oh, channel. Hey. Hey. JJ Gats. That's wonderful. Tell us what you do on your home. Hey, you guys. My name is JJ Gap, and I have a Pinterest marketing and YouTube growth channel. And so I am a niche of the social media marketing, a niche in YouTube which is a niche of digital marketing. So on my channel, I help creators who use Pinterest to market and promote their content, their websites, their Etsy shop. And then I also help uh, rising YouTubers like myself who are just starting out. Um, as I learn and grow and figure things out, I share, like for example, in the recent videos I did is 10 ways to promote your YouTube video outside of YouTube because people have to actually be on YouTube to see your video. So what if they're not coming to YouTube to find the answer to their problems? What if they're on Pinterest? What if they're on Twitter? You got to actually go where they are and bring them in. So I, you know, because I'm trying to grow myself. So I find different creative ways to grow my channel. And as I figure that out, I share with my audience. So that's it. All right. That is JJ on YouTube. We'll talk about JJ on Clubhouse maybe a little bit later. But right now, we have to invite on stage our winner of the tweet contest this week. And we just wanted you to send us a simple uh, gif or gif, whatever your persuasion in terms of pronunciation. It's gif. Uh, to, to, oh, oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Dan. Uh, you quickly, actually, um, right, well, I'll quickly do this. So this was a person who won. For some reason, the gif, no, the gif has stopped working, but it was a positivity bear punching a negativity thoughts cigarette maybe i can't see what that is anyway they won the tweet of the week so they are going to get their audit now and dan since you know officially what a gif <laughs> gif is called you can start this audit and i'm going to put a poll and find out how how it is actually pronounced in the in the uh, chat <laughs> GIF, GIF. uh martin hewlett's calming anxiety interesting okay so we're looking at I guess this is, let's see. They're, do, they're doing a lot of live streams. And I'm assuming what they're doing is helping people control their anxiety just based on the channel name alone. What I'm not getting a lot of is that in the titles or the thumbnails. And there are a lot of shorts, but it seems very, I don't know. It, that's the problem. I don't know. I don't know exactly. If I was scrolling on YouTube, I don't know exactly what these videos are. Let's check the about section then, see if we can get a clear answer. So a little bit more calm around the world. We have a membership site. And the calming anxiety app as well. Okay. And maybe they made an app or they're they're promoting an app. One or the yeah. other. So we here's the thing. Samples we- from the app. One time, like Rob, you and I were doing a, a, we were talking to a creator once who had a channel where they were trying to help athletes improve. Mm. And it wasn't a a workout channel like you would expect. It was all about eyes and eye health. Yeah. And the advice we ended up giving them was that you, you know, your all of your titles are directed at these really niche search terms around eye health. The problem is your viewers that you're trying to target may not know that they need this help, right? They're athletes, right? The target audience would be athletes in that case, trying to improve. Your job is to convince them why they need this particular type of training. And I think that kind of advice could maybe apply here because these all feel like they're pointed at very specific problems, but I might not be looking for these types of problems when I'm searching around on on YouTube. I'm not looking for these, these types of solutions. So I think you need to find a way to broaden these terms somehow so they you know they kind of hit on like a common problem a common theme Mm. um i guess anxiety it's the 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 philosophy is calming anxiety and does anxiety actually come up in any of the titles i think they put their name pretty um oh let's see 
I don't think so. Oh, I can see. So I think if you were to if you were to make videos that were about controlling anxiety, which is a common problem that a lot of people <laughs> are trying to sort out, and you made videos that just went after those types of uh, terms, you would get a lot more viewers. So yeah, if we, I mean, maybe it's intentional that they're trying to avoid the term anxiety because they don't want to almost encourage. Uh, you know, you you don't want the viewer to have that sense of that feeling, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it, it's kind of limiting them in terms of perhaps discoverability, since that's what people are searching for uh, a cure, right. you know, a cure for it. Uh, and maybe the positivity of his channel doesn't want to focus on that, but unfortunately, you know, it's a chicken in the egg situation. Well, maybe because I'm I'm just trying to think of a title for uh, their next video, right? And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. what like five reasons why meditation is the perfect tool to cure oh, anxiety, yes. but somehow shorter than that. Like try to try to take these these things that you have to help control anxiety and make those the selling point. Like you you have anxiety. Here's a thing you can do to help, you know, calm yourself. I, JJ Travis, what do you reckon? I was gonna recommend. They seem like they're all guided meditation. So and I I go to YouTube for guided meditation videos. Um, and so I don't. One thing I was going to say, I do like the fact that they've mastered a way of having a thumbnail with the shorts, because these are all a lot of them are shorts, um, but they kind of have like thumbnails because yeah. it's just the sound. It's, it's no one speaking. I would remove the words because the words give me anxiety over top of the image. The image is calming. And then you put the words on there and the words, the text um, is not even a calming text. It's kind of a complex text. So you're triggering my anxiety with the text on top of it. If it was just like a ocean or just you know someone like the woman right here just scroll by calm anxiety guided meditation she's on a rock she's sitting in front of that's me i could picture myself there i could picture myself here on these um these um these little serene images that are just sitting just just there um yeah so 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 if they're just guided meditation you don't necessarily don't but the, the, the in it say meditation because people are going to be searching if you get that search traffic of people searching for guided meditation for anxiety guided meditation for stress you know calm about a job disappointment loss you know grief all that sort of stuff like that put those words in guided meditation together if that's what it does i think you'll at least catch the search traffic if, if anything um, and at some point you get picked up by browse and recommend it maybe through this research, I'm getting an idea of the type of thumbnails, which are almost like very inviting uh, and soothing in themselves. And I mean, obviously there's the argument of, do I need to bother with such thumbnails for, um, YouTube shorts, uh, but there are a couple where they are longer live streams, I believe. And the thumbnails are just a bit too text rich, text mm -hmm. heavy. Anything from you, Travis? Or, uh, yeah, no, I agree. You, I mean, it's it is a little it. much for those type of like uh, meditation channels and such. You don't tend to see all that much in there. Also, um, this is a kind of an interesting question, uh, interesting channel because a lot of times when you see these meditative channels, they're either live streaming constantly, or there's like a you know a ten yeah. to fifteen minute or a thirty minute video. But there's there's nothing here that's like specifically like there's a question and answer live stream, which I've never seen one of those channels do. Um, mm -hmm. Shorts, I don't really understand that because for the type of person that's going to watch meditative channels, they're not going to get a lot out of a 15 second video. Like, I don't know. It, it seems like it's a little bit un, uh, unstructured or I think they're just there's trying no, to do something. There's no flagship content is kind of what you're saying. Right. Yeah. It's very much like, let me try all these things and see which one sticks. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of the... Can I, can I say, I do like oh. the concept of short meditation so if that was if you're looking for a stick to do for this channel that could be work because people are so busy and sometimes people just need strategies for calming themselves in a short amount of time like right. you know so that could be something that you do like short meditation like to calm you through the day or something like that because you have all these shorts on here but if that's going to be your, your thing then go with that and stick with that so if you're looking for one it's an idea and that is martin Hew hewlett's calming anxiety uh, dan the results are in from 254, 58 votes. GIF, 82%. <laughs> I voted for GIF. GIF, 18%. It is a resounding I, win. I told you. For the GIFs. <laughs> I don't know why I wasted everyone's time. I, I wasn't arguing. I was I was just being I was just being the mediator. 
Um, let's move on to the next channel, which is going to be BA Survival. They have hints and tips every Wednesday, but what are those hints and tips on, Travis? Right. Do tell us. Apparently about bushcraft, but I don't know what bushcraft is either. So it doesn't help me too much. But I thought it was kind of interesting, uh, the channel itself. I saw that vitamin C hip syrup thing, and I was intrigued by what that actually meant. So I probably would click, if that came up in the browse, I might actually click that. Cause, and it's funny thing is, is it's not like the thumbnail is particularly amazing, but there's just enough of a hmm, tasty treat. I need vitamin C, you know, there's just enough mm -hmm. there to make me go, oh, let me at least see what this is about. And then you got to really, really come through on uh, the first 30 seconds because I'm only kind of mildly interested. Uh, if you give me some reason to not watch, then no good. So that uh, would be yeah. where the, the 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 hook is crucial. Like the thumbnail yeah. and the title got got me, uh, but I, I need I need some more persuasion. Yeah, um, I mean, it would be one thing if I was like straight up into this sort of thing anyway. Yeah. Um, I might give it more time, but if I'm only kind of like, oh, this is what is this? Um, you kind of have to bring it home. And forging for a sweet chestnut. Uh, whoops. Hmm. Isn't that is that sweat chestnut sweat chestnuts? Forging sweet. for sweat chestnuts? No, no sweat. Yeah. No, good question. Is that a thing? A sweat chestnut? I don't think I'd want to eat a sweat chestnut. That sounds gross. <laughs> um, hand drilling fire. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, which okay, yeah. So like for, for I guess for people that are out and about in um, you know, the wilderness and whatnot, I usually watch those people on TV. I don't tend to be one of them. Um, so it um, okay, this is cool. It, it the thing is, I was talking to someone earlier today. Um, he was a military guy who has a channel um, helping vets kind of transition to civilian life and his um thumbnails were interesting because i told him i said well you know you were in the military right he goes yeah i go are these thumbnails the ones that he had created the ones that you think you would click if you were looking for this content and the interesting thing is they were overly complicated so these like mm -hmm. these ones where he's out in the the far stuff i guarantee you people that are interested in this are going to click those over some of the more kind of heavily youtubed uh, thumbnails because the person who's trying to watch this content has a specific sensibilities for for thumbnails they're all different okay. i the my mm -hmm. the thing i always do is i say go look, go on youtube search and then look for i do three different ones i do how to unclog a toilet i do chocolate cake and i do bitcoin none of them look alike because they're for different people the people who are clicking them expect something different out of them this is what someone who's a bushcraft is going to expect outside in the wilderness they see it they know what they're getting you don't have to hide any of that because that's what they're there for, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that goes for everything, by the way. So like, it just just look at your niche, whatever it is, and pay attention to the style of your thumbnail. And I bet you'll see that there is this, it, and sometimes it's not complicated. Sometimes it's overly not complicated um, without any text. But then sometimes like Bitcoin, it's just a hot mess of whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's why I say if someone tells you one strategy for all thumbnails are probably either lying or they don't know what they're talking about because it's different for everybody. I thought it was interesting um, when you got caught up a little bit on the um, the sweat chestnuts uh, and then and look at the title and then look at this one as well, foraging for rose hips. And I, I'm just curious if for layman's like us, where we get the idea of uh, living off the land, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand really what a sweat chestnut is or like yeah. rose hips. So I'm wondering if there's, if there's a, a bit of a barrier to entry, which may turn off um, casual viewers. I'm thinking how you might rephrase these titles to make them more approachable. Like for this, for example, this one might be um, nuts, nuts, nuts that won't kill you in the wild. I know it sounds a bit more extreme, but there's, a, there's more, more applicability for someone like me. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't I'm not sure if he misspelled that or if it's a real thing. Is it really there's something really called a sweat? I would it'd be better to go, what is a sweat chestnut? That that's a video I would probably watch. I'm like, oh five natural things it. to light a, a ferro rod. I have no idea what one of them is, but like how might you free phrase this title? How to light a fire without matches. Here's what I'll give you a great example of this. So this is a friend of mine. Uh pull up C Jane Drill and we'll look at one of her more viral videos. And it's something so interesting that even if you aren't someone who does like no. a lot of home improvement and stuff, no, C Jane, C like C C Dick does do -E -E. this, C Jane drill. So C S E E Jane and then drill. What's that? There you go. And then um, if we go to like her popular videos, um, 
if we get like the, one of our more popular videos, I, I think you'll start to see like why some of these are big. So like, um, yeah, make them okay. Look at the, look for the one for the pencil. This is actually how I met her. Look at the flathead pencil. This why is a carpenter's pencil flat? Yeah, it's so simple in concept. If you've ever seen one of these things, you're like, yeah, why is it flat? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it. I'm not, that's a really good question. And what, you know, I mean, like a simple trick to install baseboard correctly. The reason these things have so many views is because it's super simple. The idea is simple and it's something that maybe you've thought about and gone, huh? Yeah. What is the deal with that? Or there's a hidden tool and outlet. Everyone has an outlet. Like you, there's a tool in there. You know, it's these simple like right. things that everyone has access to that really, really take off. All right. Uh, so that is be a survival <coughs> there. Uh, Looks as if you may be in Yorkshire because I'm seeing the Pennine Way there. Uh, moving on to the I'm I'm from that area, by the way. Uh, next channel we are going to look at here is the uh, Spirit Wind Woodstone and Bone. Uh, I can't remember who picked this channel. I did. Was it, was it? Oh, Dan. All right, then. Yeah. Tell us why you picked this channel. Well, uh, I, I see in the thumbnails a lot of artistry, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. Why aren't these videos? They're doing good. I mean, 500 subscribers you know, views that are almost keeping up with subscribers are doing good, but why not better? Because these look incredible. And I remembered because wood turning kept coming up in all the titles. As you can see, it's like in every single title. And I'm like, why does that oh, yeah. sound familiar? So if you look up wood turning, I bet you'll start to see some thumbnails you may have seen because I've gotten these videos recommended to me when I'm not subscribed to any of this type of content. Does any of this look familiar to you guys? Scroll down a little bit more. There's this colored pencil one that keeps coming up. It's this, it's this machine here that, turns as the wood turns you do carvings with it okay wood that's what wood turning is this actual thing and when i saw this color pencil one pops up for me all the time and i've never watched a video like this before <laughs> but they've it's really interesting they're wood turning a you know all the color pencils pencil globe and that just kind of clicked with me so i now that i had the full understanding of the channel and i did watch some of the content they do in fact use a machine like this Right. I just wanted to, I, the main thing I wanted to point them to was that search term right there. If you look for wood turning, the biggest difference between the thumbnails that you are doing and the thumbnails that we saw there is that you're showing the finished product, but you're not showing the process. And when it comes to channels like this, okay. the process is what gets people to click on it. They, they see things starting to happen in the thumbnail and they're like, oh, that looks really interesting to me. I need to see how this turns out. When you show the finished product in the thumbnail, and just says wood turning for anyone who doesn't know what wood turning is. Because like I said, it sounded familiar. Yeah. I didn't really know what it was. Yeah. I had to really research it. But your audience isn't going to take the time to do that. So there's some really neat, intricate things going on. I would be showing the process as it's just getting started or halfway through. And people are, it's going to click right away. That machine spins the wood and you're carving something really cool out of it. Mm. Yeah. That's that, a brilliant observation, Dan. I can't, I can't um, advance on that. Yeah. Good the spot. only other thing I'll say is that that Andy uh, so and so channel we were just looking at that wood turning channel, uh, their videos are much shorter. The, these videos can be up to a half hour long in a lot of cases, and yeah. I think that's a pretty big commitment. I would I would also be shortening these videos. If, I think if you do those two things, this channel takes off. So we're seeing videos of twenty five minutes or more most of the time, or short. So it's a big juxtaposition between very long form content and short form content a couple that here that are eight minutes long uh just saw my most popular was there anything that really jumped out here as a as a guide uh so there's nothing that's really gone viral i mean there's a couple of videos that have done well done but mm -hmm. for a channel with 500 oh, yeah. subscribers you, you you probably expect one or two to maybe have tens of thousands of views right now so there's a real good consistency with the current audience but maybe the, as you say that they're, they're not getting enough um shareability on a wider net yeah. because maybe the, the thumbnails are really good for people who understand what wood turning is, but not necessarily those who are not familiar with it. And the, it's just, yeah. oh, so somebody's, somebody's making this. Uh, I'm not interested in that, but if you showed me that machine, all right, now I've got a bit of buying because this some, looks like something different or maybe something satisfying. Yeah. I think it's, there's two schools of thought here. I mean, there's the people who want to learn how to do this. And in that case, you would take a lot of time to show them because, and there, there's an investment there. They got to get these machines, you know, and they, mm. they need to have these skills. But then there's the people like me who would watch these videos purely because of the satisfaction of it. Like seeing a, a log turn into a beautiful carving. It, 
and, and that that to me is a much bigger ceiling. I think that if they were to target that audience, I don't know if they're teaching in these videos or not, but with the length, I'm kind of assuming. So if you were to target that audience that just wants to see something cool, uh, I, I think I think they have a hit on their hands. Um, what's the common denominator with all of these thumbnails? What do you mean? Not a single piece of text in sight. Ah, uh, yes. Any of these, and it's not. So they're needed. already doing. They're already doing a lot of things very, yeah. very well. Very well. It, any, they haven't been around uh, that long. Any, uh, what was it? Yeah, less than six months of a, the. Well, seven months. So I think that they're probably definitely on the road in terms of watch time. I bet they're already up to four thousand hours or close to it, uh, and hopefully. They can get their subscribers soon. And they've started using the community tab. They've just unlocked it. So <coughs> quick start there, but more posts may, may be needed. It can, this is the type of thing where I can imagine you can make a GIF of a really fancy part of the um, wood turning point. You know, it's he, mm -hmm. just start, starting to take shape. And you could use that as your preview and teasers for your videos. Uh, Jay and Travis, anything you want to add here? Or are we good to move on? Yeah, then you guys got it covered. Okay, then let's move on to the next channel. I'm just short, sorting out my tabs at the top. And we are going to find ourselves at Anna Unboxing. Awesome. All right. JJ, this is another one of yours, I believe. Yes. I loved going because we do some of the gaming and tech channels. So I wanted to make sure I keep sure, some yeah. of those up. It's not traditional, this, this channel. And I love it. unboxings personally. I get pleasure in just watching people unbox. And Anna's, I love your banner. Banner, um, it says what we can expect to, to to get. I love all your colors. You have a color. She's a color scheme um, mm -hmm. that fills through. It's like the yellow and the pinks and it's green. It's, so it's part of her brand. She did a good job of branding her channel. The only thing I would say, I did get a chance to actually watch one of her videos. Is I think she could do better job with scripting out what she's gonna say, um, and and then have some sort of purpose. So essentially. It's like I'm unboxing this, and you know, there's 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 the unboxing part when you're kind of looking at it for the first time, and so people are getting your they're sharing. It's kind of almost like the reaction channels, your reaction to seeing this product at the first for the first time. But then what she does is that she's actually talking about the product after she's already unboxed it. At that point, I think you need to do some off camera analysis and scripting and just be to the point and find four or five different perks or something that really stood out to you and just do that in order to get the audience because otherwise people are going to get bored and click off your channel you're not going to have high queue duration because they're like where are you going with this um you're unboxing it you're giving them the insight as to what the product is so you might have to do a little bit of um legwork in advance like some advanced work figure out what's good so when we actually when we're looking at it you've already done the work for us and then we can actually learn about the product versus you're doing it as you go along and it's just not editing. So there's no, you know, yeah. So it's a little, yeah. So they're short, but it's like, just get to the point and stuff like that. Sometimes that's just a couple that I saw, but otherwise I thought it was, I liked her, she, her branding and I, um, her video quality seemed pretty good. And she's um, talking about the product. It's just um, keep us entertained or keep us wanting to watch the entire video. Yeah. So, sorry, folks, due to the unique way my internet is rubbish whenever I stream, we can't watch videos. We can just watch a buffering okay. uh, icon and then scroll down the bottom to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So uh, what you're suggesting here, JJ, is that the creator needs to just jump into the uh, analytics, look at the audience feed duration, right. see if there's maybe a significant drop off in the first um, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, mm -hmm. And that might be something which she can um, possibly tackle. Uh, I did just want to add as well, as far as I'm aware, this channel is a Dutch channel. Uh, I think I, I watched one of her videos very quickly, and I, I think she was speaking in Dutch. But uh, in the Netherlands, they are very bilingual. And mm -hmm. so I, I don't think there's any issues with like English titles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very similar to India, where they'll have um, English titles, but it'll be uh, maybe a different uh, uh, spoken language in the videos themselves. Mm -hmm. I did just want to ask about a, que a question in terms of the thumbnails, in terms of... Uh, JJ, you're probably more familiar with this space. Um, is it common for the creators to just hold up the product and maybe not actually emphasize what it does? I'm thinking, because what I'm just generally thinking is a close-up of the makeup on the face, and I'm not I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing the, the product promotion more than anything else. Yeah, I think it's probably people to have, to have the product, but then also your, your reaction to the products. I think she kind of does right. that. The, her outline is unique to her branding. So I, I don't 
the little solid white line. I know a lot of YouTubers do that. And so she's showing the product, but I, they do do that. It's like the product. So what, 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 what I would recommend she does as well is look at other, see, see this is like common. You hold up yeah, the product. It's similar, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So just maybe, maybe if she could do higher resolution, like this first woman you had on there, her, her resolution was really fire. Um, these, these first two here um, versus the Yankee Candle woman, her, the, the image of her and even her product is kind of like not the best, but Anyway, so yeah, they hold up the product. It's their reaction to the product. And it's like, um, look, she shows up. <laughs> She's trying yeah, to do the a, ranking. Yeah. I don't know, it's because you already went to her channel before, but yeah. Could be, could be yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any any other thoughts, uh, Dan and Travis, before we move on? Or are we good? And see, hmm. she got better. She got better at it. Look at this, this stuff down here below. It's literally... Yeah, thumbnail evolution going on here. Yeah. I, I would definitely say... Uh, Again, target audience, you know, our, and, and it's because I don't know much about the space. So maybe you're already doing this, but making sure that the things you're unboxing video after video would appeal to the same viewers same so you can get those returning viewers up. And she and she did say in Dutch, I don't know if you just, uh, Rob, you just scrolled through one and, and it, she said it in Dutch because the one I listened to was in English. So I know what she was saying. Oh, really? But yeah. Yeah. It's, it was oh. one that was English, but down there, this says in Dutch. So I think. When it's in Dutch, she puts on a thumbnail in Dutch. And then I, I heard an English language one, but I didn't even realize that. But it is, it is Dutch. But yeah, it's, this is interesting. Just her most popular stuff uh, a year ago was tights, from what I can tell. Yeah, uh, they're all unboxings of, of tights products, and it was obviously quite a significant crossover between makeup and tights, but. We've seen many makeup channels, but I don't think we've any, ever come across a channel that focused in particular on tights. Uh, I was wondering if it was very intentional that you went away from, from this type of um, content. Maybe they, it, didn't, it wasn't trending. Last winter, tights were for some reason. Yeah. Trending. And yeah. so when they went out of style, she was like, all right, done with the tights, moving on. <laughs> makeup. <laughs> All right, that is Anna unboxing there. And I think, I'm just looking at the top of my list. I think this was uh, another channel that we need to look at. And it is Wondering Eye Outdoors. And I'll let Travis just lead on his first impressions on this one. What's uh, the vibe? Looks very strongly Canadian, but only in those last couple of videos it makes me think that. I don't know if that means that everywhere. Like, yeah, Newfoundland. Nova Scotia. Yeah. Yeah, these are all... Um, Canadian locations. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, wondering eye outdoors. Okay. Cool. So um, we have. Looks like there's some a lot of handheld, maybe GoPro type footage. So the thing that you know, you might think, well, that's not as a, as an impressive thumbnail. But by the same token, it actually gives you an expectation, which is good because if yeah. most of the video, well, it's good if they're doing that. Like if they're doing a lot of like GoPro handheld type of footage, then this will exactly meet your expectations, which is a good thing. So when you click it, you kind of get what you expect. Um, if you had like this incredibly beautiful kind of thumbnail, but it's all handheld GoPro footage, that's actually the wrong thing. You click people in and then people don't like it and they leave. So, um, from that perspective, um, interesting, um, I'm assuming that's the way they shoot their videos. Now from beyond that, you can see that even just a couple months ago, the thumbnails were sometimes not good. Um, like the backpacking across Canada, I don't, that one's terrible just because of the lighting on his face and then. Yeah, there's some bad ones here. So the thing is, is like you can get good quality shots, I would think, from the footage you already have, which it looks like what they're trying to do is do, get a screen grab and then try to make it work. But at times, it doesn't work. So for me, that bike, that back bike packing across Canada with the sunset wouldn't even put the text on the thumbnail. It's just such a mm. cool image anyway. You don't need that. Plus, Cardinal Sin, you're repeating the title in the thumbnail. Like that's pointless. And then. Cardinal sim number two, you're putting the text where the timestamp is going to go. So, yeah. I mean, that alone uh, could have improved that thumbnail quite a bit. Um, so it's not it, good. All, all of these thumbnails are like four to five months old. So, I, I guess yeah. this is a good example of how text can. I don't want to go as far as saying ruin the thumbnail, but it can start to dominate too much. And then if we go to the ones. At uh, the top here, where I don't know, is the, is the text a little more subtle here? It's, it's still a little dominant, isn't it? There's, mm -hmm. there's still work to be done here. There's these weird um, gradients going on that just, I, I don't know, it kind of, I don't know what the vibe is, but I, I don't know if the vibe is quite right with the, with the text being used here. I, I, 
Uh, you muted, JJ. Okay, I actually moved it. I was going to say that he adds a lot of color saturation in the, the text, but if you did that to the actual the photos and sad, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of green. So if he were to do some little saturation, you know, color gradient with the with the thumbnails, that might help. And he might have a cohesive look because there's a lot of green in all his thumbnails, and that might help it pop. And, you know, and then also um, show the contrast between that. For example, he's biking, he has a green jersey on. In the background, I see these. Um, evergreen trees and there's a blue sky so if you were to really play with the saturation that could really pop that could be really effective um so i think that's something you might want to consider um to titles done. yeah let's so let's talk about this real quick because i'm i'm noticing that this is very consistent in terms of view counts right like they have this really loyal audience coming yes. back again and again yeah so to me, that is licensed to play with these titles a little bit because yes, I'm yeah, I'm yeah. noticing a vlog channel here that's kind of doing almost episodic content. Backpacking through Canada, it might as well say episode 12. You know, like what happened on this particular backpacking video? Why am I clicking on it? Why am I watching? Because your your core your core audience loves it. They're they're eating it up, which is great. But where the goal here is to get more of those people in that core audience. So what I'm gonna say is like the the railway one up at the top here, the to railway Newfoundland. Like that to me is the interesting bit left out of the title, but it's in the thumbnail, if that makes sense. So yeah. that was like an interesting thing you saw while you were backpacking in that particular video. Lead with that. Like what's the most interesting thing that happens in the video? Make that the center, make that the focus of the actual video. And that might be a good place to start. Maybe you you see like some incredible animal, like a bird or something. You're like, I found a rare something or other while backpacking in Canada. You know, just just that that thing that's going to click. The oh, that's really cool. You know, I'm 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 so glad you spotted the consistency of the audience because I thought exactly the same thing. You've got maybe two hundred to four hundred return viewers that are going to click on your videos regardless of the title of a thumbnail. So you've already got them. It's now making these thumbnails and titles more accessible to a wider audience to bring in a bit a, a bigger community yeah uh, so that is a the wondering eye outdoors and i don't know maybe you'll make it to vancouver one day uh, i think you're on the other side of canada though and that is a long long trek so i wish you all the best especially a lot of videos. winter months if you're going to be biking through canada in winter whew, uh, that, that sounds like hard work think about how many videos that would be yeah it could be up to 100 300 400 maybe Moving on uh, then to Discord. I oh. promise I'm going to change this screenshot at some point because <laughs> I'm bored of Brock Lesnar and the SmackDown thumbnail there. But until then, Dan, why should people pay attention to Discord? Well, that thumbnail right there came with the message. What do, uh, what do you think? Will this get views? This person has taken their thumbnails, they're working on them, and they're asking the opinions of others. And people went ahead and they started giving advice. I kind of wonder what their thumbnails look like today. So maybe that would be just one more reason to go check out the Discord. It's full of people just like you on this crazy journey we call YouTube, uh, just like you are. It's not a place where people are spamming their content, trying to get more views, because that doesn't work. But it is a place for you know, finding a whole bunch of other people to that you can relate to, which is something I did not have when I started on YouTube. I, I was kind of alone. So that is what it's all about. The community over there is awesome. And we take people who have been super helpful and we audit one of their channels at random every week. And it is Zach does animation this week. So I think let's just go through the four of us with like one observation that we very quickly pick up on uh, for this channel. And my observation would be the titles are not helping you get clicked on because mm -hmm. they're either very functional or they tell you a what the video is rather than why you should watch this video. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, Dan, if you were to give one piece of advice to Zach, what might it be? Who are these animations for? Because right now it looks like a channel that talks about itself a lot. It, you know, a Zach does animations premiere. What are you premiering? What is the context? What did you animate? Why should anybody watch it? One piece of advice from JJ. My advice would be to remove the borders around your thumbnails on the blind driving one so that's a sort of a visual advice because it seems like it's unnecessary and then you have the a branding the zach does animations branding it's it's unnecessary you can take those off as well 
Um, I understand yeah. you want to brand it, but I'm not need it. And I've left you with the hardest tr uh, one, <laughs> Travis, because we've stolen all of the suggestions, perhaps. That's all right. I missed left. the first two, so if I repeat it, it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, I just ask yourself the hard question, who is this content for? And uh, That's kind of what Dan said, so but, you've got to pick another one. <laughs> well, wait, I wasn't even done explaining. Maybe there's another here. angle. What else did Dan so, say? Sorry, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead. No, you, no, might, have right. a, you might have a good angle on this. You should take yeah. it. I mean, like, look at it as if you don't know who you are and what type of skill level you have. And ask yourself, would I click this link? And if so, would I watch it? And then if I would watch it, would I watch another one? Like, is And try to take your, your own kind of how long it took you to make these or whatever out of it. Like, that's just take that out of it. Um, and and be, real, be real with yourself about it. Um, I'm not saying that it's not good content. I don't know. Can't see it. But really ask yourself that question. Because at one point, it looks like you were doing one thing. And now you're doing something completely different. So for me right now, it feels like you're trying different things. Nothing wrong with that. But um, who? And why would someone watch your content? And finally, Zach, congratulations on 100 subscribers. We will mm -hmm. be back in a minute. Introducing daily ideas from vidIQ. AI designed for those that have to create. Inspired by the creators that start working when others stop. Because their inspiration doesn't care for nine to five. Creators that push their ideas one step even more. Did that video break for anyone else? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Bye. All right. Well, I'm glad I stopped it then. Great. Thanks, StreamYards. Um, you stopped fix. it? Well, What's... I stopped it because it wasn't running, right? Oh, oh no, it was I, running. I, I heard it. I wasn't looking, but it, I heard I was it. looking. It was running. <laughs> so for me, it just stopped running. <laughs> oh. Hey. Yeah, well, it was running. brilliant. Weird. Should we try it again? <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the claw video now. Claw. Yeah, I got to do a claw video, which work. Well, what we were trying to say there is that we have a tool called Daily Ideas, which uh, is going to give you up to 50 suggestions based on the content that you're already making on YouTube. So whether you're a YouTube education channel, uh, a yoga fitness channel, a tech channel, a Pinterest channel, then uh, this tool is going to look at your previous videos and suggest titles for future videos. And then you can do the research on those titles to see if there are opportunities there. Uh, it is part of our boost tools, but you do get three free daily ideas every single day. But if you are a brand new vidIQ customer uh, you, uh, and you want to take advantage of all of our tools for 30 days free, then do make sure to check out the link in the description. All right, let's move on to another video uh, intro that may break or may not. I just don't know. Now, for me, that video just stopped running. It just paused. No, it went. It went all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. This is this is awesome. I, lo I love this. Uh, what we do now is we take this machine and we find out how many num uh, channels have already submitted and we're up to about 250 uh, somewhere along those lines and we put our number in this machine and it will pick out random numbers that we will start auditing uh, from our list uh, so the claw goes in it picks its number the, the number that's just taped to the ball in a really tacky way but <laughs> fair enough we take that number we go one six. Uh, what was it? One six one or one six two? One six two. And then we take uh, that video link, which hopefully I've copied correctly, and then I paste it on screen, and we look at a channel for the first time that's called "That's Some Funny Stuff." Well, let's be the judges of this. They are approaching three hundred subscribers. And what I'm seeing here on very first impressions is what we like to call dank and memes. It's a dank meme channel. So whenever I see a channel like this, I get a little nervous because I don't know how they're sourcing their content. And I've been running into a lot of channels like this uh, in, in some of the, the, the YouTube circles that I run in. And one in particular uh, that I saw actually had their about section. By the way, if you if you want your clips removed, you need to email me. You know, so 
that's that's like some people do the per forgiveness instead of permission thing on youtube and i just i'm just putting this out there's a cautionary tale like if that's how you're Oof. running your channel you're doing it wrong yeah don't do this either Oof. yeah that doesn't work either but we don't know how this channel is sourcing its content um we've some of us have seen some of this around before i'm sure some of this stuff looks familiar to me so that would be the thing i'm kind of nervous about here for this channel how like is it transformative and what we mean by transformative is that have you added enough of your own um, voice, style, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to change the original format of the content so that it is original? Um, mm. Because even if you're not picked up by um, copyright claims and whatnot, you may be hit by reused content issues when and if you try to monetize this channel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess now we've got that out of the way. It's still a difficult channel to, to recommend suggestions for if it's just content lifted from elsewhere because we, we don't really know what the focus is. We've got stuff about the rock's eyebrow and then a, a helicopter car of some kind and then Mark Zuckerberg. It's just, yeah. it's just random, hopefully funny stuff. I, I think they're going to encounter spiky views because there's just... Some of the stuff would be funny to some of their audience. And I think it's going to go by video by video. You know, certain memes will appear to certain or will appeal to certain people. This kind of feels like maybe a, a channel, you know, when um, PewDiePie does his uh, meme reviews, mm. it's almost like all of the, the content from that meme reviews, <laughs> they're, they're, they're grabbing it and just, and just uploading it. I, I don't, that sounds very simplistic, but because we don't really have a, a value proposition. The content is very shotgun in its approach. It's all over the place. It's just the default opinion that I'm reaching for the channel. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess by the silence of Jay and uh, Travis, you agree and we'll move on. Agree. Move on. All Please. right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. I kind of needed like a, you know, a prod in the, in, in the ribs there to, to, to go again. Right, so we're going to pick a gaming channel this time, and it's exactly channel 100. Oh. And let's see if this channel that is called Trism, I believe, because they have two, two R's, Trism. All, All right. right, let's take a look at this one. Now, I'm seeing memes again, sort of, but... At the same time, I, I feel like these are more connected, if that makes sense. A bit more structure, yeah. Mm -hmm. First-person shooter memes, possibly, or, or challenges in perhaps first-person shooters. In, in particular, COD Zombies. I'm yeah. Seeing here. So whether it's compilations of, of other people's like uh, headshots, for example, or it's just stuff that they've, while they're playing the game, they've been collecting like cool moments and things like that, uh, they... I, I think they know their audience pretty well. I mean, look at some of the views on these videos. I mean, yeah. so great example, f title and thumbnail working together. This is awful. Arrow pointing at something I would argue is awful. 22 things wrong with Vanguard zombies. So we have an interesting listicle and a very eye-catching thumbnail. Guess what? There's not 22 things in that thumbnail. There's but one thing and yep. the encouragement to click for 21 more awful things in Vanguard zombies. And... I don't know. This might be a channel to hold up as an example when it comes to some of the things we've been talking about today. Yeah, I mean, they talk about a channel that's hit 10,000 subscribers in one month. Uh, it feels like you, you've hit the ground running. Uh, you, your channel focus is COD Zombies. I think that's brilliant. I guess if, if it was perhaps a crossover thing, you may do a video of something along the lines of what if COD Zombies was in Halo or something similar, just a time with Halo that's going to be a huge release yeah. uh, very soon. Uh, are you using the community tab? That's a question. Yes, you are. You're getting 21,000 votes, so you're getting a huge community already there. I mean, could, I, I'm just going to start applauding because I don't yeah. know what else I can suggest, to be honest. You could stand you use the community tab a, more. You should be a pillar of the gaming community and how you can still, still, you know, in 2021, late 2021, you can start a gaming channel and in a month have 10,000 subscribers and 1.5 million views. Well, and they're they're doing they're doing something really smart. They're using games as 
but a vessel for for their personality. The the game is less relevant. It's more about what they're doing with it. The game is a. Ooh, do you think? Ooh, that, that's interesting, Dan. I'm curious I, to know what would happen if they uh, just decided to do something not COD Zombies. Yep. In, I, interesting. I, I've been getting really into this because one of my favorite channels to watch right now is Let's Game It Out. They put out a video yeah. a month, and it's always a different game, but it's it's the way they play the game, and it's it's their their through line there is they're gonna break this game, right? Every single video, they somehow manage to break the game, and that's why it works so well because they found they found their way to kind of bounce around. I think with this person, the way I don't we haven't watched any of the videos, so we could be wrong, but the way it looks to me is that they're using the game as a playground. And if they were to pivot to a different first-person shooter, but the same style of content, they might not see a drop in views at all. In fact, they might just continue to grow at the great rate that they're growing now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and their channel has been on this one topic from the very beginning. So they've stuck to their guns, <laughs> forgive the pun, uh, on COD Zombies for how long now? Uh, three months. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very, very strong stuff, very strong stuff. Uh, I'll yes. move on to the next channel. That was oh, great. Cool. Thank, thank you, JJ. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you and Travis uh, are gonna take the next one because Dan and I need hydrating. Uh, we need to take a, a verbal break. I think it's a good idea. I'm gonna get water. You two are gonna look at Duncan Custom Airbrush Channel, okay. and it looks a little bit like this. This. Oh, okay. Airbrush, nice. Okay, let's see. A good old Mr. Beast uh, banner. Is that what that is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And huh, he's got a style of thumbnail, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Got some Bob Ross looking thumbnail there. And he's an artiste. All those videos seem to be they're fairly long like his short ones are like nine minutes and that's a long one for me so it's uh yeah. it's interesting uh hunting happy little tumbler. so is his stuff like more uh, tutorial based or is it like yes that's my question is, is he because the fact that they're so long makes me think that he's showing people how to create something but then again what we were talking about with woman with the unboxing she was showing the product she was unboxing and then her face so the first few that you showed it was kind of like just him with some object, but I wasn't quite sure what the mm -hmm. object was. So, so I didn't really know what this, like, what was what's going on here. But then later on, it looks like he's airbrushing tumblers. Yeah, it looks yeah. like he's uh, through trial and error. He's figured out what thumbnails work for his audience. Because, I mean, personally, me, I would be more attracted to these types of thumbnails. Yes, me too. Uh, where the where the product is very much in focus. Yeah, and you can see the detail. But he's now gone for this he's a hero of the, the content and maybe that's through just um he's learned that the uh, as dan was saying i think a little bit in the previous channel that maybe the the the, air, the airbrush uh content is the vessel for him as the the hero of a channel and the yeah. audience is reacting more so it's kind of like reverse of what we may usually recommend mm -hmm. um but maybe the data is is, is pushing him to this in this direction but that's just I, that's just my thought from looking from a channel. I, I was gonna say it'd be great. I know he I didn't wasn't familiar with the Mr. Beast cover, but it would have been nice if you'd have said the channel's all about airbrushing tumblers and just tumblers only. Like, I didn't know though that he has 80,000 subscribers, so clearly he has an audience for this art of airbrushing tumblers. I mean it's beautiful, like you said, the ones wow. these are beautiful, <laughs> these attract me. Yeah. Like I see this, yeah. I know okay, this is a channel about airbrushing, and this is the one with the child here with the how to apply water slide decals to tumblers that's just fascinating and then the other one that attracts me is the lips that's like wow this is, this is good stuff especially christmas crafts of so many audiences for this like um schools and camps and parents and moms and teens there's a lot of folks who lo love sort of things like this so to switch it where he's the hero is kind of you're going to lose a bunch of people i don't know he might not care but you're not going to necessarily attract a variety of audiences with this, you have a larger broad audience. If I saw this, different types of people may click this to learn how to do these things. With the later thumbnails, when it's just him, he's he's just limited to people who would who are, you know maybe already know him and, and they know what he does and they're just tra checking. But you're not going to get new people with that the thumbnails that you're going with now when you're the hero of it. 
that's just something to think about. Like I wouldn't necessarily click the the, the, the early the later ones, the ones that just he started doing. These I would click on because I have kids and then I you know I love crafts and I love making home DIY projects and this is right up my alley. But I wouldn't necessarily click the other. I'm not repeating <laughs> myself, but yeah. Something this is um, one where I'd, we'd love to have um, the um, channel live, so we could ask them the question: Like, was it? A, did you make a really conscious decision to switch from these thumbnails to your most recent ones, uh, and why was that? Because I, um, what's the channel that um, I'm getting a, a ZHC vibe here? With um, I guess maybe he was trying to follow with putting himself in the thumbnails a little bit. I'm trying to find an example of um, I'm getting that vibe a little bit on some of his thumbnails, the, the, the most popular ones. Um, yeah, and he, and he does. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing because that's actually a really big YouTuber in the space. So, and um, I think what uh, ZHC did a couple of times is he, 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 um, he did designs for large creators like Mr. Beast and PewDiePie, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if they were actual collaborations or he was just doing something for a big creator to get noticed. And I think that really worked uh, for him. And so, yeah, I wonder if it's a, an interesting um, pivot point, you know, this creator's gone in a, in a direction that we on the surface maybe don't fully understand why. But notice the ones, the ones he did when there was just the product got a lot more views than the ones yeah. with just him. I mean, they were quite significantly older, so they've had a bit more time to breathe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, some of us. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, I guess what would be really interesting to see is like in terms of um, traffic sources, what are the traffic sources like for say this video versus this video and also return and uh, new and return viewers. I'm wondering if there's significant different, significant changes in the, in the volumes and the numbers there uh, with these types of uh, videos uh, and, and the way they're pitched to the audience. Anything else, chaps or chaps and chapesses? Shall we move on? Silence means that we move on to the next one. Uh, but I'm going to give you a little warning uh, right now, folks. I am going to turn on subscriber chat only. Uh, and the reason we're going to do this, because I'm going to experiment with something. So this means that you will only be able to chat if you are subscribed to the channel. All right. I know some of you... Uh, may disagree with this, but we actually did a poll on this, and I think we, we tested this on Wednesday, and I think people actually like the idea of it. So I'm putting on subscriber chat only, and a minute after you subscribe, you will be able to chat, and you'll find out why I'm doing that in around about five to ten minutes. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go back to the claw, and we're going to pick another channel, and that is 212, and this is going to be a gaming channel this time. And we are going to audit a channel which I'm going to let Dan pronounce the name of because, quite frankly, it scares me. <laughs> Is it Quixie? Yeah, I think Quixie when you, when you look gaming. at it. Well, yeah, all right. Good stuff. Why not? So Warzone, Apex, and Call of Duty, I think the banner said? It so, did, yes. yes. Oh, Call of Duty Warzone, Apex. Okay, so they are sticking to one type of game, which is cool. Uh, now, what are we doing with our content? So it looks like they're experimenting with shorts. Just given the thumbnails of those, I'm going to assume they're shorts. It's hard to tell. Uh, I'll ignore those and look more specifically at the regular video on demand. So we got MP40 Vanguard, the best and only MP40 you need. Something, something, something. I'm guessing Call of Duty Warzone's in there somewhere. And then yeah, for the end video after that's a live stream. So they are doing some live. So I think they're doing a little bit of everything, which is cool. Uh, I, I think a lot of channels are scared to do this. They do some video content. They do some live stream content and they do shorts. And they're wondering, should I put these on different channels? You can definitely do all this stuff on one channel, especially if you're in gaming. Uh, but I've seen it done both ways. It's kind of a matter of preference. Uh, so what I will say is just looking at the video on demand content only, although the live stream thumbnails, you could say this about them too. Text, 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 text. I, you're you're relying very heavily on fair enough readable text. Some of it, some of it's kind of small, yeah. but it's not enough Call of Duty in there or Apex or whatever the game you're playing is. It's it's just kind of expanding on the title 
in your thumbnails. And to me, that is some massive wasted real estate. I would be, I would be trying to get more creative with your thumbnails, make it, make, make it feel like if you're going to do the, a video on the MP40 Vanguard, then all I want to see in that thumbnail is the MP40 Vanguard. And if there's any text, maybe it's an arrow pointing and it's saying like worst weapon, you know, or, or best weapon or something like that. Two, two words, three at the most. And that's where I think this channel could, could grow a lot from if they were to improve their thumbnails for sure. Some success here with some shorts that I'm seeing. Uh, mm -hmm. Something about a controller and playing Vanguard for the first time. But then Rhinos in Streets of South Africa, my home country. That should have been on like a different channel. If they were, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. If you see a lot of cool stuff around where you live, I think you should start another channel. That's more of your, your lifestyle vlog channel. You can tie the two together with the channels tab here. But... Yeah, that, that's very distracting for your audience who's coming back for Call of Duty content, Apex content, things like that. Here's the thing. It, it is very possible, because that's intriguing that you would just see rhinos walking down your street in, in your hometown. I may watch that, and millions of other people may watch it. But what happens if that video suddenly gets 1.5 million views on your Quixie Gaming channel? Yep. Your audience is just ruined then. It's it's going to be all over the place. Um they're going to be wanting to see giraffes and lions uh, and whatever else roaming down your streets. Not necessarily the, the best game, the best rifle to use in Call of Duty Vanguard. So just think about the audience a little bit there. Uh, think think about, yeah, think about the channels as a fan of YouTube. Think about the channels that you watch in this space. The the channels you, you would, I guess, consider yourself uh, competing against. And think about why you watch them. Think about what value they offer you you know, and, and try to continually learn because it, it, there's a lot of different things going on on this channel. And that's what I'm kind of failing to see is like, why should I subscribe? Uh, and, and who is the channel for specifically? All right, folks, this is why I have turned on a subscriber chat only. We're going to pick someone from the chat itself to audit. All right. We have these forms, but we want to try and do a chat selection and the way to do that is through Streamyards, which apparently can do this so type in the chat now hashtag channel audits as you can see on screen and we're going to start collecting names and it's only going to work once so just type it in once if you do it multiple this times cool. it ain't going to work we've already got one entry so we're going to come back to this in about five minutes and we'll pick one of these uh winners uh from hashtag channel audits but in the meantime let's use a claw I'm picking another one from the list, and it is channel two, two, two. Um, we are looking at that's Matt actually better than the claw in some ways. Financial freedom. Uh, the problem is, Travis, I was you didn't have to find the often. channel, yeah, because yeah. in the weak, unique way that YouTube is rubbish these days, you cannot <laughs> click on the three dots next to a person's name and go right. to the channel. It's uniquely rubbish, uh, yeah. Uniquely rubbish. Matt calls financial freedom. Uh, yeah, let's start with you, Travis. Robin Hood stock, financial freedom. So I talk to channels like this fairly often, actually. Um, and it's about trying to figure out who your core viewership is going to be. Mm -hmm. It looks like this particular person is looking at some higher end um, mm -hmm. people to invest, whether they realize that or not. It, mm -hmm. it is because it's, uh, I mean, you're talking about. Um, Elon Musk and an index fund. And that these are not necessarily beginner friendly subjects. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Um, just understanding your your core viewership is going to be important. Not a lot of videos in the last eight months, but um, yeah. pretty good views on all of them, especially since yeah. it's a newer channel. Um, and some working out better than others. Some that are actually really, really successful. And others are just point art, which is interesting. In, in terms of uh, financial channels, in particular stock suggestions, what do you reckon the cadence should be? Because I'm thinking in terms of stock, you need to move pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking like, not live streams per se. I don't know there are live, st live streamers who do this, but mm -hmm. you're thinking you want to publish these videos on like at least once a week, if not. Right. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is like, week. you know, especially for a Bitcoin channel, same thing. A lot of big, a lot of really successful Bitcoin channels um, will live stream as well because things change very fast. But um, for sure, every week, uh, probably minimally. And then, um, you know, if you can do more 
uh, more is better because you could be a part of someone's morning before they start to you know take their money out and start to invest it they can come to your channel and look for the latest information so yeah. the more the better but i guess it depends on what your what what is it what is the purpose of this channel specifically does it say anything about like twelve hundred dollars is a weird title by the way is that a stimulus check um there is amount my goal is to combine passion investing and background in computer science to bring a real world device oh well, that's kind of cool mm -hmm. i mean it's a cool concept so then come up with a cool catchy phrase that you can use as um your you know kind of who you are because uh, financial freedom by the way is a very mm -hmm. i mean overly used kind of phrase if you had something like using tech to break you out or so i don't know something cool um you know yeah. then people can remember you easier I, I love that idea travis i mean i love that the concept of the about section and something you said travis triggered me um in terms of if it was like almost like AI driven or computer, like let the, my computer pick your stocks or, you know, like the traditional way to take stocks is to study the trends, look at the news, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of like, I'm going to use some data in my computer experience to pick the next stock and see if it, see if it wins or see if it does well and then follow up. You know what I mean? Like if, I don't know if that's a series he can do or a playlist or, or that's a shorts thing, or I don't know his cadence of his ability. Cause it seems like he, he goes a lot of time in between producing videos, but if he was serious, about this channel that's one way to go at it and having consistent content quick picks with this computer maybe using shorts or something a series where people come to look for it it's like the ai picks and then follow up to see was i correct did it go did it did it tank or did it go up you know did the computer win kind of you know people it's, it's gamification of stock buying you know i think that's something to think about now as a complete layman to trading um this is how I might approach um, this topic. I can see here uh, some good uh, green shoots of growth here. These two videos that are titled very similar. Is blank stock a buy? Question mark. I would be going into the Wall Street's bets and super stonks Reddit forums every day and see what people are talking about in terms of stocks. And I would make a video for the following morning on those topics. Uh, to, to meet the trend of what's being talked about and the formula. Um, I always go back to, oh, what's that channel called? It's Matt Talks Tech uh, in, the, um, in the tech world. He started using this title formula on pretty much every single video that he does, and it is blank release date and price. That's Every single video is titled that way. So whether it's iPhone 14, Mac M1, uh, Apple AirPods, it's product, release date, and price. And his videos just perform really well because he, he's really established that title formula. And just from what I'm seeing on this channel that has 200 subscribers, these two videos got thousands of views, and that's a good sign. But ha I guess, forgive the pun, how much do you want to invest in your channel? Because your cadence at the moment seems pretty weak. You know, one video a month uh, at best right now. And I think in terms of stocks and trading, uh, this is a, almost a daily thing. You can have a weekends off. I guarantee you that you can have a weekends off. Is that right? There's, there's no stocks trading at the weekends. I don't know anything about this area. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. It's, it's Monday through Friday. There you go. There you go. Dan, you all good? I'm great. Great. Okay. Let's pick a winner. So we have 152 entries. This actually works better than I thought. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for submitting your entries. Uh, so we're going to pick a number now. Well, pick, not pick, pick a number. We're going to pick a channel. And then I have the envious task of actually trying to find this channel <laughs> to audit. And the winner is Yay. this channel. Uh, right. Okay. So watch Siri. how easy or hard this is going to be. I will do a search for that. I want that feature. I will filter yeah. my channel. What's that, Travis? I have to use this feature in Gadgetcast. Where, where, where's that feature? I want that feature. Hey, it's at the hey, top. Oh, that actually works. Wow. <laughs> nice. Wow. Oh, OMG. Right. So let's audit this channel with a thousand subscribers and... First of all, is it a gaming channel? Is it a non-gaming channel? Um, I think it's a non-gaming channel with gaming elements because I'm seeing Pokemon. I don't know. Oh, right. Okay. So this, oh. is all hitting, this is all hitting at the same time. I'm seeing a guitar. So I think this is 
a channel that does guitar cover guitar versions covers. of movies mm-hmm. and video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Well, now's a really good time to be covering Pokemon because they're about to release the remakes of Diamond and Pearl. So mm-hmm. I think that they, they're probably, yeah, every brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl theme. So they already did a big song there that did great, 1.7K views. And to me, that that right there is the success you want to double down on. Not necessarily Pokemon, but maybe, maybe. Uh, I would be looking at other... I'd be doing some research into what are some things that Pokemon fans also like. Start with Nintendo, start with things like that, and continually cover different songs from those games, especially if the game is getting uh, an update, a, re- a big release is coming out from the franchise. That would be exactly where I'd be looking. It looks like some Avengers stuff they've done too, so Disney Plus is always putting something out. There's got to be something every couple months that you can do in that Life. So I think all of these are shorts. Mm-hmm. I think obviously what we've got to talk about here is not necessarily the audio experience, but the viewing experience. Mm-hmm. Because I think it is <laughs> just this. How can you make this bit a little more appealing? Um, whether it's a, going much closer to the um, to the threads, or maybe showing the chords as well while you're, while you're playing. Uh, I, I would be intrigued to know what the audience retention is on some of these. Because I think as if I feel as if the pitch and the idea is really good, but are people watching or listening to the end? I would get creative with the editing. I mean, the I think the the screen's more narrow than a normal phone screen. It is. It, yeah. it, we're looking at like nine by sixteen for for a short as narrow as it needs to be. You could also do square. Yeah. Uh, I would be cutting in. So if Avengers in this case, I'd be cutting in maybe. Uh, scenes from like the game or the movie and then coming back to you playing the guitar i would really play around with this because with shorts like retention matters quite a bit so little pattern interrupts here and there are going to keep people locked in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're trying to avoid them swiping away Mm -hmm. so i think what we can say here is that this is a channel with a somewhat unique uh value proposition guitar cover versions of video games and and uh, movies i think the thumbnails are really effective even mm-hmm. though they are short so i don't know how much of these are going to be used certainly going forward um but execution wise there probably needs to be a bit of work there and i've just noticed actually this one video here is 15 minutes long yeah the, the best video from the last long. week yeah. is not a short and yeah and none of the videos when it's doing a full song that um the i'm yours i love that song so he probably had search traffic on that and it's you know that's long and it got good views on that one as well. Yeah. They I mean, are. I think the, the, the video production thing is just something that's going to improve over time. They're yeah. going to figure out how to make that look better. Um, but I think, I think the pitch is, is already very good. Sorry, Dan. Uh, do, do say what you want to say. I was going to say they are incorporating gameplay footage in, in the videos already. So I think it'd be a matter of cut between it. Don't just put it in the corner, like cut between it. So like show the character walking through the area as the song transitions, you know, walking through the area where that song would actually pick up little things like that. Fans of the game are going to notice they're going to pick up on those mm-hmm. details on your latest video. It looks like now you're, you're going back and you're covering the individual songs from that game. The problem is a lot of people won't know the names of those songs or the areas they relate to. So keeping up with the search term brilliant diamond shining pearl and and then maybe route 12 like was where that song would pop up you know but like keep it consistent like let people know no this is still shining diamond brilliant pearl etc cetera, etc cetera. that you know make, make your titles really clear to someone who might not be too familiar with with everything but they are fans of the game you know that works so well let's do it one more time <laughs> <laughs> they were asking oh, no, for it in the chat. I didn't want to. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm up. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop, 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 stop. Just stop, stop, stop. Why? What happened? Stop. What's going on? I want people to. Yeah, I want people to. Know. I want people to do it again. I want to, because we don't know if people have left. So I want. Hey, while you type this, uh, we did time out a lot of people who were spamming. It only works once. You can put yes. it in as many times as you want, but you only, it only works once, and then you get timed out. So <laughs> just put it. Just hashtag channel audit one channel audits one time. There you go. And while we're waiting for that to happen, JJ, oh. tell us a little bit about what you do on Clubhouse. Sure. You. So on Clubhouse, which is an audio only app, um, what I do for vidIQ and for myself, because I have a club as well, is we host rooms for rising YouTubers, for people who um, are just early in their YouTube journey, 
uh, who are just starting out or maybe even advanced, but for essentially we say we're narrowing the learning curve and bridging that information gap. So a lot of folks start YouTube because someone said you should start a YouTube channel or they see their favorite YouTuber and they feel like they can do it themselves. But um, sometimes people skip over the, the first step of knowing what YouTube is, like it's a search platform. And then, you know, you got to do trends and thumbnails, the importance of thumbnails and view duration and and keep an audience on audience retention and lighting and video audio quality and editing and how all those different things interplay help you grow your channel. So what we try to do is provide a space where we can ask questions um, on and we have rooms Monday through Friday for vidIQ. How I and I host a champ of a room each week. Sometimes it's a thumbnails clinic. Sometimes it's a chat. It's a room about. Um, uh, niching down sometimes a niche last week it was let's let's share our productivity hacks like how do we stay productive how do we stay consistent with youtube like how do we not fall off the wagon so we you know we, we poll our audiences we see what people want to want to do content on this week i'm doing like 10 things 10 things you're getting wrong about youtube 10 things you just don't know that you're doing wrong with youtube i'm not quite sure what hawaii's channel is and then viper also hosts rooms on thursdays his are usually he usually brings in some heavy hitters um, some guests. I used to have a series called How I Built This. Dan actually was one of a guest on my How I Built This channel uh, series. And what we did with that series is that we found creators who did amazing things. Like um, Dan converted a shorts channel into a, he monetized pretty quickly with three months and he converted a shorts channel into one, you know, that didn't necessarily even need to be a shorts any longer. So it was really fascinating. Someone who grew like 20,000 subscribers while working full time, did a full time job, did YouTube on the side and grew like 80,000 part time and by niching down on a specific category. So, um, so we share those stories. So instead of learning about them, you hear from their, them, you can come on stage and ask questions and, and learn from them and say, maybe I can do that too. So yeah, so that's what we do. And when, when do we do them? Okay. So the, my rooms are usually, I've moved them to Fridays at one o'clock. Um, oh, and I should pitch. I have a really great room coming up from someone from YouTube. And I think it's the first time that YouTube uh, formally allowed someone to join the clubhouse, which is great. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, his name is, um, if I forget, Ernest Petty. He is the lead for the global, uh, I think I can announce this now, the lead for the global trends. So YouTube in January and July did a, an assessment of channels from 2020, who grew really fast during that pandemic area, who was able, so they assessed that and they assessed trends and they identified the channels that did well, that audiences resonated with, they were like sort of categories. They found trends like four or five or six different trends. And they released a report and telling us, is this what, you, this is what works? So one of them, the, the, you know, big secret is about less product, pro, um, less production um, value channels where it's just people just being raw. And I think it kind of correlates with the time during the pandemic, people were in their pajamas and they weren't polished. So they didn't necessarily gravitate to polished looking channels. So if you were just showing your behind the scenes, blogging channel, that sort of stuff like that, bringing people into your life, those channels that did that in 2020, in the previous year, they did well. So um, that's Fridays at one o'clock, and that's going to be Friday this second, probably second or third December, um, Friday in December. But otherwise, it's Wednesdays at 1 p.m. is the vidIQ room that Hawa hosts, and it's usually an instructional room. Um, and in Vipers, he fluctuates sometimes. It used to be consistently at eight. Now he does it at four, depending on his schedule. But yeah, four or eight on Thursdays. And a quick show of hands, who is live streaming right now in their pajamas? <laughs> I don't have pants on, if that helps. Whoa, too much information. Let's I always wearing shorts. Sure. 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 Fit smarts. Oh, look, it's, it's, it's smart. I it's love smart. that. I like that. Okay, so I've seen some shorts again uh, a bit of long form content here looks as if they've been taking oh, some of our advice possibly trying to tie in uh, popular and cultural trends the iron man sketch there uh, but they're also sketching roses um I'm wondering what sort of art is this could we tie this to a particular type of art which may help viewers know if they're in the right place mm -hmm. colored pencil uh would be a good place to start and not much content here. Uh, nothing done for the last month. So wow. committing to consistency, that's always mm -hmm. uh, one thing I champion when a channel uh, hasn't made any content for a while is by the end of, I'd say, 2021, I want you to have made at least six videos. So that's one a week. 
I don't know what your cadence is uh, in the past, but that's what there seems to be big gaps here as well because it was six months ago, and then you did four in a month, and then again we haven't seen anything for a month. Well, when it comes to shorts, I mean, more is more. It, yeah. You almost you almost can't make too many shorts. I would still recommend like daily. It's a lot. It's even a short can take a long time to make, but especially with yeah. channels like this. But yeah. more shots at the target. I, I mean, who knows where you'd be right now uh, if you know if, if you didn't take these breaks. I mean, you have each video is you know creeping up to a hundred views, yeah. which for for the amount of content that you've done uh, is encouraging. But, but it's that case of let me ask you this question, everybody. Uh, since we're here, does taking a break? harm you as a creator yes i say yes i don't know if it's as simple as yes or no for me i think i think yes it slows down your growth mm -hmm. define harm i i guess would be would be the way yeah. to think about it because i'm being intentionally vague I'm yeah intentionally vague. I, and i know it's if if by harm you mean irreparable damage meaning you will never grow no you can yeah. recover from anything on YouTube unless you've gotten a community strike or something like that. But it, it in the short term, yeah, it, it, the, if you're going to take a long break, there is just less content to consume. So your older videos could get views, but you're not putting out anything new. So your returning viewers have nothing new to watch. And the longer that goes on, the more they're going to bounce to other channels who are providing content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I, I think it does because I've seen channels that have taken breaks and then when they come back, other pe other people join in their niche uh, or who are continuing on, folks will click on. They're like, "Oh, this channel isn't being updated." And I do think that YouTube maybe also maybe have a preference for um, people updating their their channels that are updating their um, their channel more, providing more videos on a regular basis. Um, if, 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 if the AI was to select an old video versus a new one, and maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I think it, I think it, uh, it, it, it can harm me. And I know people who've taken breaks when they come back, they complain like, Oh my goodness, you know, I've lost subscribers or my channels aren't doing that well. I'm not making as much money because I took that break. You can take a break. I think there's ways that why you take the break, you can, um, use community tab or something else. So it's not a total break. I think, and this is probably going to echo a lot of what Dan said is what Dan said is, and I think YouTube kind of cop out with this answer because they say, no, taking a break doesn't harm your channel. And I think they they take that word at like, an restricted sense of a word. Like technically, from an algorithmic point of view, mm -hmm. your channel is not going to be penalized because mm -hmm. you take a break. However, mm -hmm. YouTube isn't about your channel. YouTube is about an audience. And it is going to harm your, I guess, um, your presence with an audience, especially when your content is, I guess, replaceable. Mm -hmm. and I, I would say 98% of creators, their content can be found somewhere else, maybe a little different, a little bit of a different style, et cetera, et cetera. And so once the creator finds that alternative, once a viewer finds that alternative while you're away, then they kind of forget about you. Mm -hmm. I think it's only the um, the exceptional two or one percent of creators who can take a break because viewers, well, who can take a break without you know being without losing their audience because the audience is has such an appetite for that exact piece of content from that exact creator that it allows them to take a break. Now, I, on the flip side of this, I'm not saying that people should just create co content to keep up with their audience. You know, people do need to balance their work and life uh, situations. But I think naturally, uh, when I when when there's, when there's something that I'm not watching anymore because there's a better alternative or because it's it's not being broadcast for a while, I, I guess you kind of look at my people watched Friends even though there may have been like a six month break because it's friends and you can only watch Ross, Rachel, Joey and Chandler on that television series. But where am I going with this now? I'm kind of waffling a little you bit. forgot Monica. I forgot <laughs> Monica, yeah. And uh, let, you know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe you don't, but I think we should probably move on to the next channel or we should actually pick uh, our final hashtag MPB. channel audit entry. And Phoebe, yeah. We forgot and, uh, now Gun I forgot. And Gunfer as well. Mm -hmm. Um, 
who sadly recently passed away. Mm. Uh, let's draw a channel, I think. I, I, I was kind of going to go off on soapbox, and then I kind of rambled my way into a dead end. And I thought maybe I should save this for a video. <laughs> Did you see that then, JJ? Mm. <laughs> How a bunga was like that close to getting a channel on. Oh, that's funny. Oh, really? That's a funny yeah. show. <laughs> she missed that one. Like, and it's instead, funny. it's sleepy. I like their channel sleepy. avatar. Yeah, let's see if we can find them. Oh, the top result again. We are we are on fire today. All Ooh. right, so they're pointing a gun at us. They want us to subscribe. <laughs> Fortnite content, I believe. Inst that instant recognition is there with it being Fortnite. Who is this guy? He's the oh, that guy's the meme guy. Um, he had a it became a meme. You actually can look it up. Uh, he's a guy in. It was Mexico or something who laughed at something, and it just became this weird meme that uh, okay. is now like used everywhere. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Had to be there. So, so again, Dan, I think we're we, we're going to have kind of similar vibes to the three to the two other memeish channels that we've already looked at. Again, this has channel focus on actually Apex, not Fortnite. It, I got strong Fortnite vibes from this, but apparently it's Apex. And it's sticking to that topic on every video, which means that they're getting a fairly consistent audience here. Yeah, I'm noticing that they're using .exe in a lot of the titles. I have a feeling am, that yeah. that meme is very old. Um, I I would be keeping up with trends, and that includes the the way you present this content. If you're going to go this meme route, and uh, I could be wrong, but I I think using like .exe in the title is something that is long since over you know and that's it. for the videos i've been successful i don't think it was because of that i apex but with zero sensitivity to me sounds like a funny challenge and i think that's why that particular video did well can you do more videos like that that take the game and and put it in a context that people go oh why didn't i think of that you know or, or oh that that sounds like it would be insane i have to i have to watch mm -hmm. oh my god that is insane i do have to watch i have to watch dan do an insane trick on his newest YouTube video where he takes a penny and flips it upside down and, and stabs it with a fork. It's amazing. Have you ever seen that? It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen on YouTube. I've never seen anything. Like I made that up. You know his channel ain't about that mess. Come on now. What's up, everybody? I saw everyone asking for a Savage Audits, and I hear that the link is broken, but that's okay because they got a new toy to play with. You can put in hashtag Savage Audits into the chat like all of you want to, and I might take a look at your channel real briefly. Because we're running out of time, and I gotta eat food. <laughs> right. I've got to do that oh, now. What savage audits? Savage yeah. audits, all one word. Just Some hold on. He's sending it up. Right. Uh, well, we'll just what do you want? Savage dollars. audits or audits? Oh my god! Here we go. Put an S on there because you know all we're right. gonna have more than one. We might have two. Done. Look, we've already got eleven savage entries. Audits. Oh, look at me go. Look how many that go. How many that? How many that? Seventeen. Is? It's more than that. Go ahead and refresh uh, that thing. Now, you, you, everybody should be mm -hmm. aware that if you get a savage audit, you're not going to get much use out of it. What are you talking about, <laughs> Dan? Are you, are you, are you, I'm going to come over here and cancel you. What's wrong with you? It depends. It's just transition from education <laughs> to entertainment. Look at all the people. Look, look, at that. look at that. Right there. Look at that number. How, how are you going to how how are you going to claim your thirty nine ninety five from all of these people? Because well, not, when they not, put it when they put in savage, uh, I have a, I have a little bot. It's in the chat. Oh, take a look at all of their he's hacking their malware and all the other things. I can't wait to get all the social security numbers. I mean, open up credit cards after after this show. <laughs> Where we at? We at a hundred yet? Eight to that. Six. Oh, look how quick that is! You see how fast it is with the I know. It's faster right. than actual channel audits, which it's I'm really the thing that you want to do in life. Give yourself a savage audit. All right, let's go ahead and pull one right quick because that's about us. Almost 100 people. Wait, hold on. Uh, well, let's, hit 100. Let's, hit, let's hit 100, 100 first and then we'll do it. That's more than, than when you put out that little thing where they got to sign it up and do all the things. You know, most of the Savage Academy people can't read, so you can't be giving them a whole bunch of things to do. You can just give them one little <laughs> hashtag. It's good to go. All right, here we go. We'll give them a form to write. That's ridiculous. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh -oh. Zenzarius, my favorite butler. I love this. Zenzarius is my dude. What's going on, Zenzarius? Uh, Let's see Zenzarius. what you've been up to lately. I love Zenzarius, my good old dude right there. The literal mm -hmm. hero mm. of Channel Audit live streams yes, for indeed. years. Zenzarius, what have you been up to since we last saw you? All right. Still doing the lonely life, as I can see uh, in your mom's basement. Uh, I mean, listen, it's all right. It's, it's rent free. 
you can live in there rent free, but I mean, you, you got to clean up after yourself because, uh, from what I understand, man, you you leave a mess. Uh, let's see what you got going on here in your channel. Uh, we got a lot of purple and pink going on. That's cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. And uh, a lot of a lot of um, I got a lot of questions, in Zarius. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking at this. I got a lot of questions, my friend. I don't. I'm afraid of the answers though. But you look at look how handsome you look with this yeah. cartoon face. Why is it we don't see a real face? We see a cartoon face. Never mind. That I think I just answered my own question. Uh, <laughs> let me take a look. What is this? Yuri Roasty. What does that say? My eyes are bad now. I got like cataracts or something. I don't know what it is. Uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. What is it? What is that? That sounds like something that Dan would know. Dan, what's a Doki Doki? It's, this is a game. It's, it was really popular a while back. Uh, I haven't seen anything of it in some time. Mm. Uh, I don't know much about it other than the name, and I, I know that it was a very strange game. It got a lot of headlines. Oh, my God. I bet it got a lot of headlines. I bet a lot of people ended up on that show I used to watch back in the day where they're like, have a seat. You know what I remember that one? That was a good one. I like that show. That was good. I watch a lot of them on YouTube. Those clips are good. All right, let's go to the next one. Since there, thank you so much for always being my butler and bringing my stuff over. We love you uh, over here at the Savage Academy. Appreciate you very well. Thank you. Thank you. Minute. We'll just we'll draw from the you. same list, which is now at 119. Right. Have a seat. Uh, let's see. Michael Andrew. Who do we win? Mm, hey, I'm detailing. All right, let's take a look at some detailing. Oh, wait. All right, there we go. All right, did that copy and paste that Rob is so well known for? Yeah, we're doing well here. We're like, is, look at this, we're working. Four for four, yeah. <laughs> Good darn. It's working. All right, with 20 subscribers, JM detailing details your JMs. Let's take a look at what this means. A bunch of shorts or some ASMR detailing. Well, he's only been doing this for a little bit. How long did it? Two hours ago? Holy <laughs> mother of pearl. You ain't got nothing else to do, huh? You ain't got no job or nothing. You uploading six times today. What is What is happening with you? <laughs> You ain't got no time to do nothing. You should detail my car. I, obviously, you over here got enough time to be taking videos of detailing things. Uh, man, two hours ago. Didn't we start live streaming two, two hours ago? <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. You upload this while we on here? Get, get this guy off the screen. You can't be uploading some stuff while we on here. Don't even know how important we are. Let's do one more because they don't do that. <laughs> I hate that. I hate when people do that. Next. One more. One more. It's worse when the live streaming. <laughs> well, well, That's well, the worst. Well. The live streaming while we're doing it. it's like, what's going on? The- Orthania's gaming parlor. Look how they spell parlor. You know they fancy. <laughs> <laughs> These are people that drink with their pinky and uh, drink tea with their pinky and uh, you know. Uh oh, there we go. Okay, Let's there we go. Look. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh man, this is fancy. Look at this. Oh, what is happening here? When the monster rolls and a bunch of short, I can't stand the short because you look at them, you can't quite see what's going on in them. Uh, let's play Death's Door. I don't want to do that. Uh, mistakes were made. Yes, I, I'm not gonna lie. That, that's kind of what it feels like when I look at this channel. Mistakes were made. Uh, let's see. Long shot boarding. Did I say crack? I mean, I know my eyes are bad, but I actually say crack. Oh, crack shot. Never mind. I thought we were looking at a plumber channel. I don't know what was going on. Uh, one more. Let's play Death's Door. Well, we can, we can play. What is Death's Door? You probably know about this, Dan. What is Death's Door? What is that? Is looks looks like a game, I guess. I'm glad we have you on the channel, Dan. You helped so much. <laughs> <laughs> he has so much knowledge that he can share and spread to everybody. Just, just I don't know, maybe. Okay, that's great. Love that. All right. One well, more? listen. I appreciate it. But we can do. Well, let's do one more. I do like a 30 second one, real quick. Let me do a quick one. Uh, I can, yeah, I can sure. like this we'll one out. Do a, a savage short audit, shall we? Savage. There we go. Like a savage short. Take t- longer, longer for us to find mm-hmm. it than we do auditing it. Oh wait! That's oh, hey, oh, this no, is messed this up, man. Look at this. this is, it twice. What is happening oh, with this messed up thing? I think it's shenanigans. Is what's going on here? You know that's that's just, that's hooked I've up. Just that's lost right. all faith in Streamyards again. Yeah, I, for a minute I was excited. Now I'm thinking it's a, it's a piggy's <laughs> world. I like a little. Look at that little cute thing right there. Yeah, it looks like a. Yeah, it went down to there. Maybe? Would they go down to the pet shop and grab one of them uh, fat rats they got? That's a fat rat. Look at that fat rat. Man. That's a cute little fat rat. Piggy, well, that ain't no pig. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's a guinea pig, huh? Look at this. All right, that ain't that sweet? They so cute. You know, I, I got to be honest. You know what this right? I used to actually have a guinea pig. They were nice. And then I saw this documentary where where guinea pigs like actually live, and they're like these these huts, and they'll like climb up on the walls and stuff, and of these huts and stuff. And they're, they're pets for the people to live there. You know what? They eat them. This is no lie. You can actually look this up. There are people in this indigenous something or other, and they let the little guinea pigs all around, and they let them live with them until they want to eat them. They just take them off the wall. Like, that one looks fat. Let's go throw them and put them in a roast. 
I'm going to tell you something. I never got over that. I was humanly scarred forever on that one. So when I see a guinea pig, know how cute they are, I'm thinking, man, someone's eating this dude right here. This cousin cousin got flame broiled. I'm I'm telling you, man. He put some soup on him. Put some soup on him. Anything to do with this. Oh, my God. It just makes me want to throw up in my mouth. Um, So anyway, who this person is is with some guinea pigs. Do you eat these guinea pigs? If you do, we got to cancel you right now. Uh, And you're a savage, so probably... All right, thank you everyone for joining us on the Savage Academy this week. We we appreciate you. 3995 every five minutes. And make sure to leave your uh area code, zip code, uh serial number, your uh your date of birth, uh your address, your credit card number, everything in the chat, and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thank you so much. <laughs> that, that payment processor savage is really <laughs> intrusive. <laughs> anyway, make sure they can't charge back. Uh, That'll do it. Just a, just a whirlwind. Just just comes mm. in. Throws everything about and then leaves. Uh, Savage, uh, mm. you want to you want to say goodbye to some people? Yeah, we can say goodbye to some of these people. I mean, why not? We're gonna say goodbye to Gamer Rex. It's good to see you, Gamer Rex. Game Game Rex. Game is that? Do you do the R when you only have an R for the same thing? Game Rex. Game Rex. Game Rex. Traveling with Russell. Russell is good to see you, man. Good to see you, Russell. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming through. The Little Mouse Production. We just saw that man with the. That was a big mouse. What we just looking at? Uh, and we got Zen Zarius, my man. Zen Zarius, he shooketh. He is shooketh. Uh, let's do two more. I'll say, pl- listen, man, is that an I or an L? I hate that. English language is terrible. You can't tell if something's a capital I or an L. I just I can't stand the English language. It's crazy. And then, of course, Rabbit Key. Rabbit Key. All right, Rabbit Key. We appreciate you and your little Mario Luigi looking dude there. Uh, make sure you try to submit again next week, and I'm sure you won't get it. Thank you, Savage. Mm. Uh, JJ, let's, hey. let's have some goodbyes from you. Bye to Linux, Linux Made Easy. So long, Shappy Stash. I love that name. Foxy, t- Foxy Tizzy. See you later. Dragonfly, JO3NS. Of course. Oh, Excalibur. Bye, Excalibur. Bye, Hawabanga. She's going to go cheese. <laughs> Bye, Hawabanga. I'm done. I see you later to Egg Keg Films, to Koi Fish Gaming, to The Fire Pilot, to uh, now we can start. Let's go. Does nobody tell Fire Pilot? Why does he look like Ricky Gervais? (laughs) Goodbye to Calvin. Uh, Goodbye to RC Awesomeness. And goodbye to uh, Minecraft Transformers. Folks, I'm exhausted. I'll just say goodbye to all of you. See you on Wednesday.